us, yeah. This it is um I don't know in Malaysia, but uh, now it's raining in Bogor, Prof. Oh <laughs> yes, always raining as as you know, yeah, Prof. Yeah, you just uh you just went to Bo oh no uh ten days Bogor. ago ten days oh, ago ten days ago yeah yeah I don't have any opportunity to meet uh everyone in IPB. <laughs> You just you just went to uh the ICC yeah, Prof, yeah. IP, yeah, IP, yeah, right. Yeah. The hotels, there yeah, are yeah, conference yeah. there. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah. All right, maybe maybe um uh next year summer course yeah, Prof. We, yeah, yeah, inshallah. You. If you invite me, yeah, I can go there. Yeah. Please, please. <laughs> okay, okay, everybody. Okay, uh, Prof, maybe we. Um, wait for another one two minutes, yeah, Prof. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Can I share the the slide? Or... Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. All right. Okay. While we waiting for the participants, Prof. Uh, please allow me to read your short bio, Prof. Yeah. Yeah. Please. All right. Okay. Um. Um, uh, Professor Dr. Nursidaman uh, was born in September 1970 and working as a lecturer at Department of Agribusiness and Bioresources Economics, Faculty of Agriculture, University Putra, Malaysia. She was awarded uh, the PhD in 2003 and Master in Agriculture Economics and Management in 1999 and Bachelor's Degree in Agricultural System Engineering from all from Kagoshima University, Japan. Her fields of specialization are agriculture extension, agriculture development, agriculture economics and management. 13 PhD and 26 master, master students were graduated under her supervision. Her professional achievements are including a director of Asian Service Learning Program, Malaysia Chapter for Asian Service Learning Program between UPM, Malaysia, Raja Magala University of Technology, Tanya Buri, Thailand, and IPB. <laughs> and then uh, also awardee of professional, pro, sorry, profess, professorial chair scholarship, Searka, ya, eh, Prof. Ya. And also, uh, also Prof. Nur Sidaman is Malaysia representative at the ninth, ninth annual meeting global forum for rural advisory services 2018, and also a uh, representative for global forum member for rural advisory services. Also, Malaysia chapter advisory rural advisory services for Southeast Asia and committee member of International Society for Southeast Asian Agricultural Science, and also uh, she is a member of National Council of Professors and deputy president of Malaysia Agriculture Economics Associations, and many more. Professor Nur Sidaman has published one hundred and thirty-eight academic journal papers two books, eight chapters of book, many newspapers, articles, and her current page index corpus is seven. Wow. Masya Allah, Prof. That's really impressive. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Daniel, Daniel, yeah. Very impressive, especially, um, especially for PhD students like Daniel James, like from Malaysia, Prof. Oh, from really? Malaysia. Okay, nice yeah. to meet you, Daniel. <laughs> from uh, University Malaysia Sabah, Prof. Mm. Yeah. And also, we have also another PhD student from Gottingen University, oh. uh, Noel, and also a PhD student uh, in IPB, though, uh, Tiki. Yeah, All yeah. right. <laughs> okay, Prof. Norsida, time and place are yours. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Melani. Okay, be patient with me because it's a late evening. Maybe you uh, exhausted already because <laughs> a long a long sweat, a long time was spent for uh, learning some things. Okay, uh, thank you very much, PB, because you gave me opportunity uh, to participate in this summer school. I tried to uh, deliver uh, the, the talk about the greenhouse gas emission in agriculture, particularly uh, in Malaysia, okay, in Malaysia case. So before we go further, uh, 
uh, we need to know what the challenges of global agriculture toward 2050. Now is 2022. Okay. According to Food Agriculture Organization, agriculture in 21st century faced multiple challenges. What is the challenges? It has to produce more food and fiber to feed a growing population with a smaller rural labor force, more food stock for a potential huge bioenergy market, contribute to overall development in the many agriculture dependent developing countries, adopt more efficient and sustainable production methods and adapt to climate change. That is the challenges. What the mega trends that shaping the agriculture sector? Okay, according to FAO and World Bank, the current global population is 7.6 billion and it is expected to be 9.2 billion in 2050. By 2050, the population in developing country will be roughly 8 billion. So nearly 9% of the global population face hunger. Okay, and an estimated 840 million will face food insecurity by the year 2030. Okay, only eight years from now. And then the mega trend that shaping the things in agriculture is food security. Uh, it's more than just ensuring there is enough food to eat. There's one food security. How about the climate change? It's shifting weather pattern that threaten food production. Disrupt food availability, reduce access to food and affect food quality. Poverty is the state of not having enough material possession or income for a person's basic needs. While technology breakthrough is also shaping the agriculture. Position uh, farming and technological advancement along the supply chain help to address challenges in agriculture and meet rising global food demand, driving the next wave of agriculture revolution. Then urbanization, uh, with heavy migration from rural to urban areas, resulting a significant change in land utilization and distribution system. Good produce in factory or commodities in agriculture should reach customer. This one, uh, sometimes the, the trend gives you a problem. And then like the technology breakthrough is give the positive impact. Okay, so uh, we continue with and the next uh, challenges or the next um, uh, trend that shaping the agriculture. With the overgrowing population in the world today, the need for increased food production to avert food crisis is urgent across the globe. Okay, according to the final report of the FAO of the UN in 2020, while the COVID-19 pandemic is having different effect on all food sector, uh, the agriculture food sector has advantage in this regard, as other sectors are not as good as others when it comes to resisting the epidemic. Agriculture plays the main role in food supply through stepping up production and increase yield in order to feed the, the, the world. However, recent study found that the high production and consumption of food has made a significant contribution to global greenhouse GHG emission. This one is our topic for today. What is the GHG emission? Um, I heard that you had a uh, previous or before uh, the class uh, about the carbon footprint. So maybe uh, there are information was delivered about the greenhouse gas too. So, according to Garnet, that GHG emission from food will remain constant or increase over the coming decade unless there is a move towards more sustainable food system. Okay, look at this uh, pie chart. It's indicate about the global greenhouse gas emission by gas. There are many gases. Okay, so carbon dioxide is 60%, carbon dioxide, forestry and land use, 11%, methane, 16 and uh, nitrous oxide is 6%, while F gas means that other gas is 2%. What is this? Carbon dioxide, CO2, emitted from direct human-induced impact on forestry and other land use. 
while methane CH4 is produced due to the agriculture activity like waste management, energy use, and biomass uh, burning. And 2O uh, is produced due to agriculture activity like fertilizer use and fossil fuel combustion. While fluorinated gas, F gas, including HFC, PFC, and S F6 are produced due to do, due to industrial process, refrigeration, and use of consumer products. Okay, um, from the global greenhouse gas emission by economic sector, we can see that from agriculture, forestry, and other land use that relate to agriculture is about 24% of global GHG. Okay, it's coming from agriculture, uh, especially from cultivation of crops and livestock or deforestation. Okay, 24% eh, from 100%. Um, what is carbon footprint? Okay, I know you know about this, CF. CF is the amount of greenhouse gases, as I mentioned before. Uh, primarily carbon dioxide, CO2, released into the atmosphere by a, partic a particular human activity. This term also defined as the demand on um, biocapacity required to sequester uh, the carbon dioxide emission from fossil fuel combustion. Um, CF is important to identify the climate change of production sector. Okay. And it's widely applied in agriculture, industrial production, food consumption, and international trading. CF information is important for policy decision in order to develop climate-friendly incentives for food consumption and domestic trading between region and improve management practice. Um, how about the carbon footprint in agriculture? We talk uh, about the GHG emission in agriculture, but now we try to talk about the CF in agriculture. Okay, agriculture is the top sector that produces GHG emission. Most agriculture production emissions come from raising livestock. Okay, livestock as a cattle. Livestock rearing lead to the most of GHG emission is due to so what? One, methane released from enteric fermentation and potentially from animal manure. Loss of carbon stored in forests and soil from land use change and degradation. Number three is fossil fuels burned to produce mineral fertilizer for feed production. A study shown that cultivation of rice contribute to major source of methane, nitrous oxide which have impact on climate change according to Chai. According to FAO, uh, fifth, uh, 14 or nearly 15% of GHG, global GHG emission, 7.1 gigatons of CO2 equivalent can be attributed to the livestock sector annually. In 2018, global emission due to agriculture within the farm gate and including related land use, land changes, where 9.3 billion tons of CO2 equivalent. Okay, uh, you can see this figure is indicate how the greenhouse gas emissions happen. For example, livestock rearing in natural process, crop fertilization using chemical fertilizer, material used to build and maintain farm, energy use of the farm building and vehicles, Transport and distribution during and after growing. Soil-based emission from disturbing soil. Waste produced as a result of farming process. Everything is this produce the uh, gases, GHG emission. Okay, according uh, to this figure, we can see that the contribution of crop and livestock activity to total non-CO2 emission from agriculture in 2018. Uh, you can see fermentation 39%, livestock manure 20%, uh, synthetic fertilizer 30%, rice 10%, manure management 6 crop residue 4 burning savanna 5 drain organic soil non-CO2 is 2 The main differences between CO2 and CO2 EQ is that CO2 only account for carbon dioxide, while CO2 EQ accounts for carbon dioxide and all the other gases as well, methane, nitrous oxide, and others. 
Okay, in the case of Malaysia, uh, Malaysia produce um, oil palm uh, to produce palm oil. So we have a large, a huge area uh, which is growing by uh, oil palm. In Malaysia, agriculture contribute as ten percent of Malaysian gross GDP. Eh? Palm oil, rice and meat production, particularly beef and poultry, are identified as the three largest contributors of GHG within the agriculture sector. Okay. Uh, to produce palm oil, or oil palm, sorry, yeah, oil palm, Warren study underlined the high GHG impact from oil palm production. Principal GHG sources are from uh, changes in carbon stock, planting and peatland, and operation. This contribute the high one. How about the rice production? Malaysia relies on rice as a dietary staple and produce about 72% of the rice it needs. Okay, like Indonesia, like other country, they make a rice is the, as a main staple food. So rice production is significant source of nitrous oxide and important GHG. So Malaysia aim to become self-sufficient in rice production in next 10 years. So that will happen about the GHG emission. Uh, while to produce the livestock, okay, Rearing of livestock is largest contributor of GHG in global food production. However, Malaysia is self-sufficiency in pork and eggs and is the largest producer of poultry in Asia. Despite importing 80% of beef requirement, rearing of cattle is expected to a significant source of GHG. Okay, uh, to make a detail, I try to explain um, according to the sector, subsector of agriculture, uh, palm, oil palm production. You need to differentiate, yeah? maybe uh, the mistake this one, oil palm and palm oil. In this case, you growing the thing is oil palm, while you produce the oil is palm oil. So here, oil palm dominates the agriculture landscape in Malaysia, as I mentioned. Therefore, the corresponding GHG impact should not be underestimated. Okay, uh, below figure explain the source of GHG in oil palm production. GHG emission arising from operation during palm oil growing and FFB processing or more precisely, Okay, FFB is fresh fruit bunch. Okay, emission relate to the use of fossil fuel for plantation, internal transport and machinery. Uh, emission relate to the use of fertilizer to fertilize the trees. Emission relate to the use of fuel in the palm oil mill or palm oil miller, milling and the use of palm oil mill for products. Emission from Palm oil mill uh, effluent or pome. GHG emission arising from changes in carbon stock during development of new planting and also emission from peat. Okay, only when planting are on peat, peat is the, uh, the types of uh, soil. Uh, then we try to look uh, this figure. Maybe you can understand is indicate or explain about the emission sources, emission sinks in oil palm production. Uh, to produce the oil palm, we need to clear the land first. Land clearing really stored carbon in the biomass. The level of emission depends on the type of previous land use. Okay. Um, peatland cultivation, this represents a significant source of GHG emission. Okay, we call the types of uh, soil peatland, yeah, the area of peat. So, uh, the sources of this gas emission is come from fertilizer transport and use of fertilizers. Fill foil used due to the harvesting and collect of FFB. Mill diesel usage, oil combustion is a source of CO2, while palm oil mill influence release the methane. Okay, while it sinks, 
Biogas offset, methane from palm oil mill effluent is captured and can be used for electricity or other energy usage, avoiding emission. This is a solution uh, to, 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 to solve the problem of gas emission. So palm kernel shell, PKS sales, sold externally and used as replacement for fossil fuel can be offset as it reduces emission. While carbon sequestration in the palm oil biomass to prevent emission into the atmosphere. And then, mill foil of offset is based on biomass with only a small volume of diesel used for backup generators. They can avoid emission and can be offset. Uh, the source is come from the Kulim, Malaysia Prahat, one of the uh, big plantation company. Okay, how about the rice production? We saw about the gas emission in oil palm production. Now we can see about the rice production. Rice is one of the most abundant crop grown. Okay, abundant and consumed globally. Make up 12% of global methane emission. 1.5% uh, of total greenhouse gas emission as most the world rice is grown in flooded fields. Flooded rice field emits CH4 due to the methane process, which occurs in anaerobic condition during the decomposition of organic matter. Rice oil is the third most widely planted crop in Malaysia after oil palm and rubber. In 2020, uh, approximately uh, 644 hectares were planted with rice, wetland, and dryland paddy including those that are planted twice a year. Okay, in Malaysia, we're growing twice a year. Water management system under which rice is grown is one of the most important factors affecting H4 emission besides fertilization practice, soil temperature, soil type, rice variety, and cultivation practices. The main water management practices applied in Malaysia is continuous flooding with two planting systems, or planting season in a year. When we call this system is double cropping. When the fields are flooded with the water, uh, aerobic decomposition of organic matter gradually depletes most of the oxygen. Okay, oxygen O2 present in the soil, causing an aerobic soil condition. Once the environment becomes anaerobic, CH4 is produced through an aerobic decomposition of soil organic matter by methane, uh, methanogenic uh, bacteria. Upline, well, upland uh, rice fields are not flooded. These are believed not emitting CH4. Okay. Mm. How about the livestock? Okay. As I be mentioned before, the livestock also uh, contribute to gas emission. So we can see that this sector emits estimate 7 point gigaton of CO2 per year, uh, representing 4.5% of human-induced green gas houses emission. Um, feed production and manure emit carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, and methane, which consequently affect climate change. So that this topic is more related to climate change when the gas house gas emission. Uh, animal production increased methane emission. It's contrast with the, what, the rice production and also is the oil palm. Besides livestock production also affected in many ways by a changing climate. This include productivity changes in rangeland, pasture, crop yield, as well as increased heat stress which is known to have negative effect on production, reproductive performance, and animal health and animal welfare. So increasing the efficiency of livestock supply chain is key to limiting the growth of GHG emission in the future. Um, okay, uh, to avoid the or to reduce the uh, greenhouse gases emission, what kind of the mitigation strategy we can use uh, in agriculture sector. Okay. GHG emission from agriculture activity can be reduced through more efficient management. We need to manage it. Of carbon and nitrogen flows within agriculture system. 
Okay, mitigation. Eh? Okay, mitigation strategies in oil palm plantation. Okay, practice maintain soil fertility by reducing the use of synthetic fertilizer. Okay, opposite to organic fertilizer. Synthetic uh, fertilizer is made by foil. Okay. Establish composting project to recycle nutrition from empty fruit bunch and palm oil mill uh, influence for make pack into the field is the mitigation. Installing palm oil mill for methane capture and power generation. The first palm oil mill in Malaysia is the nut palm oil mill. It can capture around 30% of the methane generated by the mill each year. Introduction of renewable energy from crude, crude palm oil to produce biodiesel is to reduce carbon emission. In this case, uh, produce a biodiesel is one of the mitigation strategies uh, that can be solve the problem of GH emission in oil palm plantation. Um, how about in rice? Okay, we can do conservation tillage. We can have a water saving irrigation technique such as alternate wetting and drying. Or we can do soil amendment with biochar, vermicompost, everything that relate to the organics or compost for sustainable rice production. And then we can do uh, increase the nitrogen use efficiency by adopting improved fertilizer application method compared to the conventional and management through broadcasting method or the adoption of the integrated plant nutrition system. Uh, it's hard to understand, but it's, it's one of the mitigation that we can do through fertilize, fertilizer application. Urea deplacement, UDP, could be more effective in mitigating GHG emission when it combined with water saving, alternate wetting and drying. Irrigation compared to a uh, continuous flooding CF irrigation. This study showed that there are mitigation strategies that can reduce the GHG gas emission. Uh, in livestock production, there are also mitigation strategies. Okay, number one is select regionally appropriate forage, practice rotational grazing. Select high quality feed that will reduce methane release from enteric fermentation. Manage manure to reduce methane and nitrous oxide by cover manure storage facilities, optimize manure application to soil, and capture or combust methane from manure. Okay, so I think I will, I will uh, show you or share with you. Uh, how we can do because livestock uh, farming or livestock sector uh, contribute to the gas emission. So the strategy is one is do it by sustainably. So sustainable livestock practices strategy can uh, reduce the gas emission. First, we can do in a good animal house that can be lower the emission of GHG. Uh, for example, uh, we can do a practice that we call uh, good animal husbandry practices. This also can reduce the impact uh, on the environment. FAO uh, even suggested that this emission from livestock could be reduced by 30% in the part of by adopting existing health and husbandry best practices. Uh, good agriculture practices also, but in this case, in sustainable livestock, we can do uh, or reduce the gas emission by adopting existing health husbandry best practices. Okay. Uh, poor animal health, lacking welfare and mismanagement of livestock means animals are more susceptible to disease and may die before they reach lactation, reach an age ready to breed or for slaughter. So monitoring good animal health reduces the number of unproductive animals that emit GHG. For example, in beef cattle, eh, 
The diseases neosporosis impact birth rate, pushing GHG higher. So, study by SKUs 2016 revealed that the better disease management could create emission saving of 4.5%, significant for one of the biggest producers of GHG emission in Scotland. Okay. Number two, we can do changing the nutrition mix. Good overall nutrition on the farm strengthens the animal natural immune system and help keep them in optimal health. This helps the animal produce more, allowing farmers to meet local demand with fewer animals, thereby reducing greenhouse gas emission. Scientists have found that changing the makeup of animal feed can cut the level of methane and nitrogen gas produced, which contribute to the global warming. Okay, through um, makeup of animal feed, we can reduce the gas emission that will affect our global warming. Adding food by products to animal feed has been proven to help cut also the emission because it relies less on energy intensive grain crop. Uh, for example, in the study of Bushmin, only cattle feed assess the impact of different fats on methane production. Tallow, sunflower oil, and whole sunflower seed were added to diet of Angus. Okay, result found each animal produced around 16, uh, no, 14% less methane when diet contained tallow and sunflower oil. And 30 3% less methane was emitted when diet contains sunflower seed. Uh, it's the way how we can reduce the GHG through the feed, eh? cattle feed. Okay. We only have... Uh, okay. So new product to target methane redu redu reduction. Innovation in dietary supplement and vaccine are helping to reduce emission too. Dietary supplements have been developed that reduce the amount of methane. They work by blocking an enzyme which triggers microbes in the gut to create the methane. In New Zealand, scientists have been working on a vaccine that works in a similar way. The vaccine targets the methanogens, that gut bacteria, the gut bacteria that produce the methane. This vaccine activates the animal's immune system which renders the methanogens insensitive. Okay, this is the way how the new products that can be uh that can help the reduction of the methane. Okay, let's continue with this. Let's talk about the uh how sustainable livestock production should come into consideration for many aspects, include okay, because livestock production uh, uh contribute to the gas emission. So we can do sustainable animal husbandry system. We need to take care about the animal health and welfare. Uh, we can do integration of livestock farming into the landscape and the community, contribute the areas of energy, and we need to take care about the climate and environment, uh, and then make sure there are business opportunity and available market and responsible consumption. So many aspects that we need to consider um, to avoid or to reduce the gas emission in livestock or in agriculture. We can do also on soil conservation and carbon sequestration by implement crop rotation. We can avoid our application of fertilizer, can establish agroforestry system, switch from conventional tillage to conservation tillage or no-till, we can switch from annual to perennial crop and we can increase fuel residue through irrigation, fertilization, planting hay or cover crop and using additional organic material such as manure. Okay, energy conservation and fuel switching. Uh, conduct an on-farm oil fuel energy assessment to identify energy saving opportunity. Ensure that all heating and cooling system in farming are in good working order so that they can reduce the gas emission, use timer, sensor, or variable speed drive on ventilation, heating, cooling, and lighting system. And also, we need to replace fossil fuel power equipment with electrical pump and motor so that we can uh, conserve our energy. 
Okay, and then the last slide before we go to conclusion. Uh, we can practicing uh, renewable energy, okay, on agriculture land by anaerobic digestion, like growing the feedstock used for biofuel, install the wind turbine for electricity, install solar panel for electricity and biofuel production from crop or crop residue. Okay, uh, talk a lot about the GHG emission and focusing to agriculture and how we can mitigate it. Uh, or we can do the sustainable uh, agriculture practices. And then I did explain for you on how uh, livestock uh, farming or sustainable livestock. So for the conclusion, I try to say that GHG emission from agriculture activities cannot be underestimated. Okay, even this sector play main role in producing the food to feed the people, you and me. However, GHG can be reduced through more efficient management of carbon and nitrogen flows within agriculture system. What we can do is mitigation or adaptation. So smart farming not only will reduce the impact to environment, but also optimize production. We can use this approach, smart farming, Meanwhile, climate action in agriculture system can reduce GHG emission, improve food security, save farmers money, and bring about better house outcome. Uh, this that's all from me. I give back to the Madam Chairman, um, Dr. La Melani. Yes. All from me. Maybe oh. I'm late. Oh, I'm very fast. Thank you very much. That's just perfect, Prof. Uh, Norsida. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Prof. Norsida, for uh, delivering a very interesting issue today, the greenhouse gas emissions in uh, Malaysian agriculture, eh, Prof. Yeah? Right, yes. All right, Prof. Uh, we already have some questions. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Prof. Can I stop uh, sharing and just yes. focus on the chat or the question? Yes, please stop. Stop sharing, isn't it? Yeah. Mm, wait a minute. Ah, okay. All right. Okay, okay. back to you. Uh, yes, Prof. Mm -hmm. uh, Robby Robbie Fauzan. Uh, Robbie Fauzan. Uh, he asked you, Prof, uh, we in oil palm plantation has done that the four things explained uh, before uh, by you, Prof. Uh, the challenge mm -hmm. to carbon footprint production is now the emission from internal and external transportation of FFBs, CPO, and canal. To reduce this can only be effectively done by re redesigning the block design and transporting system after replanting. You have other opinion for speedy solution, bro. <laughs> okay, it's a very difficult question. Yeah? <laughs> okay, we try a lot step by step and maybe we can find the potential solution. However, as you explained, now they are, um, or currently they are practicing like, uh, like as you mentioned here, Okay, transportation, mitigation on soil or in milling so that we can reduce the carbon footprint or uh, gas emission. Mm. Uh, this is speedy solution. Mm. I don't think we have. However, we need to focus on implementation. Not all the oil palm plantation do it. And yeah. then not all of the, the plantation people or the community understand about this food carbon uh, carbon footprint. So the first thing we need to educate the people or make sure they understand well so that they can practice uh, many things. Uh, for example, as, um, as uh, suggested by MSPO or RSPO doing on sustainable agriculture practices, uh, do this and do this. So it's a one a way how we can help or we can contribute to the GHG emission. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Still, yeah. Still, still question from uh, Robbie Fauzan, Prof. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't oil palm become 
carbon neutral or even a carbon sink mm. after nine years of planted. So it is age dependent. Mm. Okay, means that you're asking about, yeah, doesn't oil pump become carbon neutral or even a carbon sink after nine years planted? So it's age dependent. Uh, age also in the type of soil. Okay, mm. uh, so maybe in the peat land, maybe they are different from other uh, soil, uh, like mineral or what. But there are two ways where we can, uh, there are uh, two, uh, when you have a carbon uh, emission, then you try to sink it. So there are many ways for from now and the future, maybe we can use others. But we, we need to do a things, mitigation. Okay, uh, adaptation is uh, try to adapt. However, mitigation strategy is needed. Okay, maybe I know answer it you well. Yeah, depend on the soil soil type also, yeah, prof. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Is there is there any any other questions? Uh, or maybe I just uh, Daniel. How about you, Daniel? You have any question for Prof. Uh, Norsida, Daniel? Today. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Daniel. Yeah, actually, I was curious. Is, is there any companies or the operations or industries that already practice to be sustainable that we can refer to, especially in how they initiate, implement the method, and how they able to balance between being sustainable and also profitable at the same time, and also like. Uh, how can we cultivate these sustainable sustainable actions on other companies? Because they are the main, uh, mm. they are the main, uh, they are the one who can take the action because they are the bigger. They yeah, have the power. Yeah, I understand it. And then how we can uh, ensure that other companies are also following. The, yeah. All the company or plantation or yeah. farmers, smallholder farmers, they need to follow the regulation that country decide or the world decide. It's according to rice sustainable and rice pula. RSPO or MSPO, they, they are regulation on this matter. So every person or every stakeholders that, re uh, that relate uh, to, to what's uh, doing on oil palm, uh, they need to follow it. One day, maybe that become compulsory. So we have a guideline. We have a rules. And then the world decide it. So Malaysia need to follow it. Indonesia need to follow it. Whatever the things, they need to follow it. If they not follow it, maybe our production, no, uh, the, pro the production of uh, oil palm, uh, they can, maybe they can stop our export. They can, uh, they can, uh, what's they can ban on, on the production from Malaysia or Indonesia because we not follow that regulation. They uh give the rule, the, the the rule and regulation regarding this. So, one or not one, we need to follow. Okay, but uh, what the important thing is, we need to, to have the person, to have the community or company or the, the, the plantation sector to understand why we ask them to do this and this uh, relating to the gas carbon emission. We try to uh, make them understand and then uh, we, can, we can see maybe they can take an action on this. But they need to follow it. Okay, this answer for Daniel. Melanie? Yeah, thank you, Prof. Mm. Uh, Daniel? Mm. Yeah. So you satisfied with that, yeah, Daniel? <laughs> okay, Prof. Uh, uh, Parobi, uh, are you still want to ask us a question to Prof. Norsida, Parobi? Because you yes, yes. Uh, yes, please. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry, I I, uh, I lost my signal when I, I, I submit my first uh, question. So question, the, yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can repeat the summary later. So I, I have the second, yeah, the second question. Uh, 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 for four years, I I work as a risk management coordinator in one of the biggest plantation in Indonesia. 
The problem is that if we want to follow the principle and criteria of, uh, let's say, the uh, uh, RSPO and the ISPO, uh, the marginal benefit uh, coming in terms of additional income of uh, conforming to the regulation is not uh, proportional to the <laughs> increment of the cost. Uh, that's, mm. that's one thing. And uh, that system not clear the, to the, uh, the supply and demand dynamics. So if we, uh, let's say if you increase your production to certain level and down and then yeah, have no benefit in that thing. Uh, so, uh, if uh, let's say uh, we we are talking about actual practice, let's mm. say you you reduce the in inorganic fertilizer in the plant oil palm plantation by twenty five percent, the mm. reduction in yield ten percent. But if you reduce the organic fertilizer by uh, by fifty percent and replacing with the organic fertilizer by twenty five percent, the reduction in in yield. Mm. is far greater. <laughs> so what is the benefit? Uh, because we are in the risk management, we, we are looking at the profit and loss statement. Of yeah, the company. yeah, yeah, right. Otherwise, we are out of job. <laughs> okay, yeah. I understand what you're asking and your opinion is relating to uh, because the plantation, if you want to develop the plantation area, what you will do first? You need to clear the forest, everything, isn't it? So you yeah, win, yeah. okay? You want to have a profit, you win, okay? However, you need to give back to us. I mean, you give back to the good environment by doing the sustainable. You know, maybe when you use the compost or organic uh, material to fertilize, maybe you will profit or cause damage or everything but you need to have a consideration on how to avoid uh, give the damage to the environment this come first you take the profit and then you need to give back by following or uh, implement for example not 100% however you need to maybe 30% using the organic and also 7% uh, as a usual. So win-win station, give and take. Um, maybe the profit is important for you. If not profit, you will lose and we will lose the job, everything. However, we want to protect the earth. We want to make sure agriculture, not damage the environment, we can continue to the next generation. It's more important. If everything polluted, if everything was damaged, it's more uh, crucial, more worse, uh, bad, uh, we'll, we'll get. Okay? Maybe okay. A, a good good opinion from uh, Mr. Robin. Robin, Robin, sorry. So there are yeah, there are many opinion on this. If you do this, you will uh, lose is this is opportunity cost. Yeah. But okay, uh, we want to have uh, good things from oil palm also or rubber or other thing. But you know, sometimes we lose something. So we want we do not want to lose everything without do anything. Yeah, Melanie, this is my answer. Maybe it's a not good answer for uh, Mr. Robbie Fauzan. But that's true, yeah, Prof. Always trade off, yeah? Always yeah, yeah. Trade off, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Trade off, yeah. Ah. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, Prof. Uh, Robbie, thanks for the question. Welcome, uh, 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 Prof, uh, mm. we have Noel from Gottingen University. Uh, Prof, uh, Noel, maybe you did just ask uh, directly your question to Prof. Norsida. Noel? Yeah, Noel, where are you? Emmanuel? Ah, oh, okay. Where are you, Noel? Okay, okay. Maybe I just 
Mm. Then I just sorry. Oh, I have an issue with the connection. Okay, okay. I will I will oh, read okay, your okay. question. What is your opinion about agroforestry, Prof? Can this method be considered as an integrated approach to sustainable land use in the future? Thank you. Yeah, this is one way. Okay, we already cut everything, and then now we need to replant it or we need to integrate it. Means is agroforestry is the good way. Maybe it's take time, okay? But it's our effort, the first step, okay? So the uh, the the agroforestry is one way, uh, or one of the contribution to 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 protect environment and to protect uh, the, the 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 soil, or we can do whatever that maybe contribute to the the gas uh, gas emission, okay? Yeah. I see one of the question from yes. Chai. Chai, yep. Chai, Chai asking about the GHG. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chai, yeah. Mm. Only but the measure might be costly. Yeah, like uh, uh, Mr. Robbie Fauzan, okay. Uh, costly for local farmers. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Uh, because if they use um they use what uh, they use um organics or um, uh, fertilizer to replace synthetic this may be costly okay for local farmers he are uh, small holders mm -hmm. but maybe in this case uh the country need to do something okay if you implement this one Maybe you need to have incentive received from the government or subsidy. That's the way. We do not want our small holder lose their income or they are not have a good profit. So maybe we can think about the strategy, how to help them and uh, what uh, encourage them to have sustainable agriculture practices in what time we 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 need to help them so it's one way this is uh, answer for the uh, for child eating yeah so mm. it's also from malaysia bro <laughs> ah that's why i saw the name you know this is malaysian <laughs> yeah all right another uh, maybe uh, uh muhammad sikandar muhammad sikandar you are are you from pakistan yeah yeah uh, you want to uh, say something to Prof. Norsida directly? Hello? Ahmad, yeah. Muhammad Sikandar from Pakistan? Global, yeah. Hmm. Or do you also have uh, a... Buildings. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I understand what Muhammad Sikandar asking. Uh, government or global community... Uh, any other solution? They are always thinking about this. They all they 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 usually conducting the meeting uh globally, so they have tried to find uh the way how to reduce this carbon footprint. So carbon footprint, if we uh we don't care or we unaware about this, the effect is more to us. Okay, the evil effect. Uh, the the agriculture when the agriculture affected that's also affected the human life okay so it's more important we want we have a food because we facing the issues of food insecurity if we don't have enough food to feed the people what happened okay we are uh, we also uh, have a problem or issues challenges uh, of the uh, climate change so we don't want to 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 what to increase more problems to to the agriculture mm -hmm. so um, the countries the globe uh, global or world's people or world uh, responsibility person need to for example United nation so they need to implement strategy uh, they need to urge us to to follow the regulation or suggestion as the we can meet uh, SDGs. So SDGs keep a uh, guideline to us. This global one, SDGs, meaning Sustainable Development Goal. So we follow it. 
and we can find many many uh, strategies or action that can be followed this answer for Muhammad Sikanda. Thank you, Prof. Uh, mm. Is there any other questions uh, from IPB students? I, I haven't hear a voice from IPB. <laughs> Hello, IPB, come on. You have any curiosity or uh, yeah, question to Prof. Uh, Norsida? Mm -hmm. Welcome, dears. <laughs> if any question. Noel, Noel. Oh, you, uh, yeah, not only question, maybe you can suggest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, mm. Noel, did, is this your, uh, is there any success story from Malaysia regarding agroforestry in oil palm or rubber plantations, Prof? Which success factors and barrier, barriers evolved during the establishment of agroforestry? Another question from uh, the agroforestry approach is uh, Indonesia more better. Mm. Mm. The agriculture they, they use agroforestry while also in Malaysia, but I I see that the efforts more from Indonesia mm. agroforestry. So maybe I can learn or see the successful story or. Uh, story from Indonesia rather than Malaysia. Malaysia do also, but um, the approach sustain uh, the, the the success of this approach can be seen also in uh, Indonesia. Okay, when I visit yeah. my Indonesia, I can see that many of farmers they growing uh, egg, grow or oh, they 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 use the concept of. Integrated farming, uh, they use the agroforestry approach. Okay, so right. maybe for the Malaysia, Indonesia is one of the sample, the, the successful story for this agroforestry. Okay, at least hmm. we have uh, uh, one thing better in Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we learn together. <laughs> right, of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If I'm not wrong, uh, the World Agroforestry Center headquarter in Indonesia, eh, Prof. Yeah. Mm. That, that one, uh, that one, the headquarter in Bogor. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. C4, yeah, Center for yeah, C4, Forestry yeah, C4. Research also, mm. yeah, headquarter in Bogor. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, who is this? Uh, another question, uh, Prof. I just found mm. out that in production, we also release emissions and it will affect the reduction of carbon food. Oh, okay. This is just up and just mm -hmm. um statement uh, just yeah mm -hmm. just, uh, conclusion <laughs> from your from your uh, lecture today prof yeah yeah <coughs> okay um guys students uh, is there any question uh yeah i think you or you already address all questions prof yeah yeah thank you very much mm, yes clean and mm. clear all right um Okay, then Daniel, you have still still have one more question. Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, just out of curiosity about the livestock production. Hmm. Yeah, that, um, because uh, as a livestock uh, producer, uh, and then we are also concerned with the halal uh, hmm. markets like that. Yeah. Uh, just, just out of curiosity, I was, uh, would like to ask, like, if is it, uh, contradict with the halal market if like we try to improve the food production to make the livestock grow faster than usual like let's say you want to maybe it could save uh, lower the carbon emission like making them fast growing uh, yeah. it, it's different story it's not relating yeah. to the halal if you do organic or you uh, you use a new feed for, for it so when you formulate the feed for the for the cattle, make sure you use the the halal one. I mean, um, uh, like they use the bones or everything. But it's halal is a white and white what's so the concept. So uh, we need to know that uh, like 
if if you don't not give the, the 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 drugs or the alcohol to the cattle, it's okay. <laughs> uh, it's relating to the halal. However, for the feet, it's okay unless they use uh, anything that may be uh, not halal to 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 feed uh, to the the cattle. Everything is okay if you implement the things that uh, start, uh, develop the new feed. So it's, it's no problem to the cattle production. It's not related to the halal. However, the feed that contains uh, the, the things that may be is not halal, it's, you need to consider it. Yeah. Melanie? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm. Thanks, Daniel. Okay. Uh... Uh, let me check if there's still any one who raised hands. Um, yeah, I don't think so. Yes, prop. So it's now clean and clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you very much Everything. for hearing me. Of Sometimes the, the the answer is not fit your question, but I try to throw my opinion, of and course. my opinion is uh my 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 own. So maybe it's not the the opinion from country or policy makers so that may be but i try i try to contribute my ideas and opinions okay. regarding this the question and the content of the presentation thank you very much all right Pro, what, hmm. oh my goodness uh muhammad sikandar <laughs> okay, one, one question from uh, muhammad sikandar Pro. Well, yeah. Prof, uh, please briefly explain the function of cop conference of parties and Oh my God! This is just like like lecture. Uh, clean development mechanism and Kyoto Protocol for reducing climate issues such as carbon footprints. <laughs> and Kyoto Protocol for reducing the COP. Uh, uh, I'm not so sure yeah. about this conference of parties or CDM Clean Development Mechanism. Yeah, this is more. Well, the thing is, yeah. uh, it's about uh to save the environment. So they're doing the distinct regulation uh, conference uh, mechanism uh, that maybe guide us uh, how we protect uh, the environment uh, yes. from the global perspective. Yeah. And we need to respect it and follow it. Okay. Right. Uh, that yeah requires uh, the, the countries of the world to uh, reduce emission for, uh, from carbon, yeah? Mm, okay. Right, yeah. right. Yes, yeah. scale to protocol. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, big applause for Professor Norsi there. Yeah. Thank you very much for patience and your ear to 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 hear my my sharing knowledge sharing. All thank you right. very much. Yeah. Thank you so much, Prof. And hopefully next year we will Inshallah. in Bogor. Inshallah. Yeah. 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 Uh, Bogor is kota hujan. Hopefully. When I go there, no rain. <laughs> okay. Oh really? Oh yeah. 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 Yeah, ten, ten days ago it's quite dry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, rain, yeah. Raining, raining. <laughs> oh, okay. No problems. It's natural, nature. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Once again, thank you, Prof, from all of us. Yeah, most welcome. Most welcome. Thank you, everybody. Sarange, Arya to Thank you. Share, share. Yeah. Assalamualaikum. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, everybody, don't forget to fill in the uh, attendance form, okay? And, and uh, we don't have sessions tomorrow, okay? 